I want to invite our audience to please uh, use the uh, chat window to tell us where you are coming from. And uh, also it will be helpful for us to know uh, in which generation you belong to. You know, if you are a Gen Z, I'm guessing you are between seven and 22. So um, just say Gen Z or something like that. And if you are a millennial, 23 to 38, then say M, so we know you are a millennial. And 39 to 54, that's the segment I was told is Generation X. So yeah, Gen X, I can see uh, Remco already. Uh, if you're a baby boomer, 55 to 73, we like to know. And over 74, I believe is called the silent generation. So an S will do. So yeah, please tell us which part of the world you are coming in from. Uh, good to know, we always have an international audience. I can see Dubai, I can see Abu Dhabi, I can see San Francisco, wow. I can see some millennials joining us and, and so many others. Okay, so we've got our first 20 people in the room. Good time to start. Let me uh, begin by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Sharad Agarwal. I'm the Chief Metaverse Officer of Cybergear based in Dubai. I wear a couple of other hats as well. I have recently joined as an advisor to a fund uh, which is called Elysium Ventures. We are a $100 million fund based out of Dubai and we will be promoting Web3 startups in this region. Uh, and finally, I'm the founder of Only Webinars, and I'm happy to be your host for uh, this uh, session. Um, we have an amazing panel, as always, and a global one at that. We have Alistair, who's coming in from Italy. We have Hannah Ben Shabbat, who's coming in from New York. Kelly, all the way from Canada, across the oceans. Lela Hustle is the local Dubai girl in the room, and Presence Plum is coming in from London, UK. So welcome, all of you, uh, panelists. Uh, we have a lot of Gen Z's uh, in the room and uh, on the panel, and our topic is exactly this, Gen Z and the metaverse. So let's get started with introductions. I'll go around the room and I'll come to Alistair first. Alistair, please introduce yourself to our audience. Hello, everyone. I'm Alistair, 20 years old, founder and CTO in a tech company. And I remember when I was eight years old, I, I was amazing surfing around Google Earth and other platform and see a lot of places and listen music and sound from all around the world. But something left me like, oh, there is something missed to my experiences. It's not authentic enough than my natural ones. So I've tried to understand, for example, okay, I can see, I can listen to, but I can't smell too. So I've tried to understand how to extend the audiovisual domain, introducing properly uh, an, a multi-sensory environment in internet. So that's br brought to me to study human computer interaction from Copenhagen to Venice. And now I'm running a company that's aiming to internet of senses, actually. Thank you, Alistair. Yeah. Let's go to Canada. Kelly, your introduction, please. Hi everyone, it's wonderful to connect with you. My name is Kelly and my passion is bridging opportunity gaps for the next generation. So we do future skills education to upskill youth to, the, to emerging career sectors and innovation sectors like the metaverse. And one of our marquee events is Yunga, which is the largest global festival for impact that connects Gen Z and young leaders in 170 countries with today's decision makers to co-create solutions for the UN Sustainable Development Goals and pressing global challenges. Amazing, Kelly. Let's go to New York. Hannah, please. Yes. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. Hannah Ben Shabbat from New York. Uh, I'm the founder of Gen Z Planet. And my company does three things. One, we are doing custom research around Gen Z, trying to understand their effect on our culture, on our workplace, and on the consumer market. We provide workshops and speaking engagements and advisory services for brands and companies who want to understand the next generation better. Thanks, Anna. Let's go to Leila. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for, for being here today. And thank you, Sharath, for including me on this amazing panel. I'm a board member and chief metaverse officer at Versa State. We are a hyper-realistic metaverse, fully based and licensed in Dubai. And I'm also the founder of All Stars Women DAO, 
which is an initiative to help close the gender and funding gap in the tech, uh, tech and Web3 space. And uh, also, I'm a mentor at uh, the Accelerator, which is between Brink and Animoca Brands. Uh, and also, uh, I'm an advisor uh, and on the board uh, of uh, CyberGear. Uh, so really excited about that. And, uh, you know, Sharad is a very really good friend and, uh, and mentor as well. So very excited to be here. Yeah, thanks, Leila. Let's go to Presence UK. Hi, everyone. Um, super cool to meet all the panelists. Um, so I'm Presence. Um, last year, I spent um, a gap year. So I was doing economics at uni, and then I was working on building an NFT rental startup. Um, but I recently left that startup to go full time on my current uh, Gen Z community, which is focusing on onboarding the next wave of talent into Web3. So providing free educational and upskilling programs to help them find what really excites them um, uh, to do in a job. And I think the Web3 space is so new. There's something like new, interesting careers that students aren't aware of. Um, so it's trying to like show them what's out there. Um, and then previously also in turn doing tokenomics at Animalical Brands as well, and just helping a bunch of different communities doing a bunch of <laughs> all sorts of stuff in Web3. So yeah, that's- Very that's cool. It. Thanks, Presence. Uh, I'm gonna start with Hannah because she's already authored a book, Gen Z 360. And uh, Hannah, I was going through uh, some pages of your book and you say there that the Gen Z don't play by the same rules. They disrupt, they side hustle. What does side hustle mean? What are the attributes of the Gen Z? So I think there are many attributes that make this generation unique. And you know, I can take an hour to talk about all of them, but I would like to focus on the one that are, I believe are very important for the metaverse. So first and foremost, and very obvious is the connect, is connectivity. This is a generation that grew up not knowing a world without a search engine, cell phone, or social media. And that has a huge effect on who they are, how they think, how they play, how they process information, how they communicate with one another, and also what they expect from the workplace and what they expect from their relationship with brands. And therefore, when we think about the metaverse, this whole, there is a lot of conversation and a lot of hype around the movement from you know, web two to web three. But for Gen Z, this is all very natural. They are going to be the early adopters of the metaverse and we already have here great examples. And if eventually I believe that they are going to be the one who defines what the metaverse is because the way they're gonna use it, both as users or developers and the, and the feedback that they will give us will dictate the shape and form of the metaverse. I think the second attribute, when I talk a lot about that in my book, this is a generation that celebrates individuality. And they are highly individualistic. They rather stand out than fit in. And this is very much related to connectivity because it is so hard to stand out in a world that is so crowded and I talk about the digital world. So you need to stand out, you need to do something different, you need to always be there. And, and I think that's kind of a, require a lot of, a, a lot of self-expression that maybe we didn't have so much pressure on it with previous generations. So as a result, I think Gen Z constantly look for the tools and new ways to express themselves. And I think the metaverse is already proving itself as a place where the whole notion of identity, what it is, who I am, how, how I show up, actually, um, you know, is, is, is an actually platform for that. And the third thing is, uh, is consuming consciously. Uh, Gen Z is more likely than any generations before them to make purchasing decision or choose an employer based on their values. And what they value, a lot of things, but I think diversity and inclusion is, uh, is one area that is non-negotiable for Gen Z. Uh, and inclusivity for Gen Z is defined in the, in the, in the most broader way and the sense of the world. So it could be gender, sexual orientation, race, ethnicity, disabilities, and so on. 
but uh, there are other things, of course, like sustainability that is a very extremely for these generations. And I believe, again, in the context of the metaverse, this generation would like to build a metaverse space that reflects these values. So for me, these are the three uh, attributes that I would say are extremely important when we talk around the metaverse. Yeah, thanks for defining those attributes. And my experience uh, is with my son. He's not exactly a Gen Z. He's moved on to be a millennial. But whenever I ask him any question, he says, Dad, ask Siri or go to Google. He rarely ever answers my question. And I find this uh, hilarious and a little disturbing at times because and the other thing in my interactions with my millennial son is uh, when I knock on his door, his office, by the way, is just next door because we operate from home. I knock the door, he never answers. So what I do is I shut the internet and he comes out in 15 seconds flat. So that's the new generation. And I guess people my age are figuring out how to deal with them and how to uh, grab their attention. Okay, so moving on. Now we know who the Gen Z are and you know what cites them and what motivates them, et cetera. I'm going to now pivot to Alistair. And before I give him the mic, I want to share a little backstory of how I first met Alistair. Uh, I happened to be at the NFT London uh, five, six weeks back. And Alistair reached out to me through LinkedIn saying he wanted to have a meeting, and which we did. And I'm very happy I met him because for the next two hours, whatever he spoke, I understood very little. But I knew that this guy is going to go places because at 20, he referred to himself as a futurist. Okay, that's mind blowing. Think about it. 20 year old describes himself as a futurist. So I want to hear from the futurist what he is building for all of us. Uh, Alistair, take four or five minutes, whatever time you need, but please explain what you are building in the metaverse in layman terms without using too much jargon. And uh, uh, audience, Alistair is Italian. His English is 50-50. So let's try and understand from him what he's building. It's going to be huge. So over to you, Alistair. Hello. Yeah, again. So uh, today I want to focus in, in one of our use cases in healthcare. So if we see healthcare co consumers are today are changing and their expectation for affordability, for convenience and quality are redefining how they engage in each stage of healthcare. Um, like different demographics prefer different healthcare experiences. Gen Z count around 2 billion of people is the first generation ever born with a phone in uh, their hands, in our hands. And if that's lifestyle reflects necessarily the healthcare choices. So for example, statistically 45% of Gen Zers don't have a primary care physician and 51% of millennials visit doctor less than once per year. So if you're going to ask uh, to some younger generation, uh, they say probably, yeah, I would like to have a primary care physician, but I have not found one that meets my preferences for time, cost, and conveniences. But even if it's the like young generation visit doctor the least, uh, actually we are more concerned about our overall health and wellness, thanks to the all information that have already available to us to from search engines, from fitness trackers, for smart watches. So in this moment, younger consumers are not satisfied with healthcare's status quo. And they are more willing to try non-traditional uh, services. 89% is open to try new ways of caring. So both Gen Z and millennials wants digital option for healthcare too. Includes virtual visits, easy and safety access to their own health data and records, chatting maybe with medical professional, 
something like social media. And also the time is a huge point of our consciousness because we said, oh, we don't have much time in our uh, busy schedule. So that's why we value, first of all, preventive care than other um, situation. Like we know exactly that prevent it's better than caring. So in this landscape, me and my team are working to develop a tiny wearable devices, the device, uh, a powerful diagnostic tool that identify disease through sniff out your bodily emissions from tears, swears, um, like blood and other, yeah, probably um, metab metabolism, uh, uh, what's your metabolism came out and your smells is a powerful chemical information about your wellness state. And this could reduce the cost and actually know, make you know about your wellness state in five minutes with 90% of accuracy, just mailing with our device. This is one of our powerful use cases based on actually smelling and recognizing um, what's going on in your body. Yeah, that's... Super. I think that's going to be a game changer in the healthcare industry and Metaverse of Senses is basically Alistair's uh, project. Uh, so yeah, uh, keep, a, keep an eye on that. And Alistair, I've already invited you to Dubai with your partner. Uh, come with your pitch deck and we'll be happy to see what support we can provide you to go to market with this amazing project. So there you have it, Alistair. Thank you. I'm going to bounce to Kelly. And I know, Kelly, you're doing some amazing stuff, not only in your part of the world, but globally. So please walk us through some of your initiatives. Yes, thank you so much. So uh, my passion, as I mentioned, is building bridges of opportunity to reduce inequalities and create a universal access to participate in the emerging sectors and economy. So one element of that is making sure the next generation has access to the knowledge, tools, and resources to participate in emerging sectors like Web3, Metaverse, and what have you. And I think this is, I'm, what's exciting about Web3 and uh, sectors like Metaverse is we're seeing a merging of uh, skills and sectors. So traditionally, pre-Gen Z and our generation of young people are, and even still in its current traditional format, education is very secular. We pick a pathway and we specialize in it. And I remember that I used to have such a challenge when I was first deciding a pathway for university when if I chose science and math, um, I majored in biomedical science when I first started, that I had zero room in my curriculum for any humanities, history, social science, art, creativity, language, anything that was outside of that very specific path. And what we're seeing in emerging careers is we're seeing a merging of sectors and no longer um, becoming specialists but being an ever learning and evolving generalist. Because as the economy emerges and technology emerges, our skills will turn over. We will continue to need to upskill and reskill into emerging jobs as we grow. Um, we will no longer have just one career for our lifetime as we may have seen parents or grandparents. We will have multiple hats. And so the skills we need for the future are no longer, for instance, um, learning just how to code, because the language that I learned how to code in will change within the next two years, maybe earlier than that. What I need to learn are more transferable skills, like uh, spatial awareness and design thinking and uh, creative problem solving, critical thinking. How do I ask the right questions to find the right answers? Uh, so it's a whole new set of skills that um, are actually rooted in um, soft skills. So I think the name soft skills doesn't necessarily do the skills justice because we feel that soft means lesser than uh, what the skills actually uh, mean in our lives. Uh, so I like to look at it more like our future skills toolkit and a lot of these more um, lifelong learning skills that help us become successful in, in life and work are really what our generation needs uh, to succeed in the sector. 
And uh, one really good example of that with the metaverse is you see the connection and merging of, of creative and digital spaces. Because if I'm going to become a world builder and learn 3D design, I need to be a creative, in some sense, very visual artist and understand creativity and, uh, like I mentioned, design principles and all these things. But I also need to know technical skills to be able to make my creations come to life. So I feel it's a perfect example of how uh, we no longer just have one hat for life and one pathway, but we become uh, these multi-dimensional, multi-career and uh a skilled talent that can participate in the opportunities that we know are coming and the ones that we don't yet even know what will hold. Thanks, Kelly. We appreciate what you're doing and wish you a lot of success uh, in your uh, mission. Uh, I'm going to uh, stay in Dubai uh, with Lela Hostel. So, Lela, uh, talk to us a little bit about worse estate. Um, what is this virtual real estate that you are building in the metaverse? Sure, sure. And whoa, like the amount of talent that there is in this room is crazy. I'm, I'm really super happy to be here. So yeah, just to kind of, you know, take like a, a step back, I would like to say that, you know, in terms of our generation, I really think that Gen Z's, like we consider our digital identity and our digital life uh, just as important as our physical one. Like uh, the metaverse, I think, is not like another life, but it's basically an extension of our current one. And uh, since we often spend like eight or even more hours online a day, uh, and we're even more like immersed in digital culture and uh, than any other gen generation, actually. So I would say that one particularity about uh, Gen Z, which is, you know, our generation, is that we hold companies to a much higher standard than, than previous generations. And we really require brands uh, that we support to provide quality products, uh, authenticity, and trustworthy, trustworthiness. Uh, so we, we expect these brands to focus on diversity and to take a true stand for social justice. So we care deeply about building the metaverse ethically and responsibly. And uh, since, since I think, you know, personally, the metaverse will impact significantly all of our lives and offer a chance to build a more equitable future. So that's why, you know, through my work at Verse Estate and, and All Stars Women, I really want to make sure that we build and contribute to building an open and collaborative metaverse uh, that promotes, you know, the right, uh, the right things. So that's why at Verse Estate, for example, we're making sure that, uh, so now we have a team of around 50 full-time engineers. So we wanna make sure that at least 50% of them are female uh, to, to be as inclusive as possible. Uh, we're also gonna implement, you know, various, um, various forms of uh, activities in our, in our metaverse to, to make sure to include all types of uh, populations. We'll, we're also building uh, in-house avatars. We're going to have the biggest uh, 3D scanning studio and uh, the avatars will be, you know, customizable and it comes under all types of shapes and forms and, and skin tones and varieties to make sure that everyone has an equal representation. Uh, as well, you know, not only in terms of gender or in terms of ethnicity, but also in terms of, uh, you know, if somebody is disabled or, you know, if someone is colorblind, we're also going to be able to accommodate for these types of people. And um, yeah, and as well with All Stars Women, we're making sure that uh, we fund, you know, more females uh, because in the tech space, it's no secret that there is, it's a very male dominated field. So trying to change that as well. So within my work between Universe and All Stars Women, uh, yeah, trying to contribute as, as best as possible for this. Amazing. Uh, love everything you're doing, Lela. And Thank you. Uh, just keep going, yeah. Uh, yeah, you do, to... actually. You're, you're doing great things uh, in the <laughs> space, uh, honestly, like dominating the, the field. Right. Let's go to UK. We have Presence. Uh, presence, I know you're working on... Uh, the challenges that Gen Zs are facing in the field of uh, education, right? So can you walk us through some of those challenges and how do you see Metaverse uh, being able to solve those challenges? Yeah, I guess like, um, I kind of want to, sorry, I want to connect what I'm saying with what Kelly has said, because I completely agree with everything. Like I've been doing small side hustles, a lot of different things since a young age. 
And as I grow up, as I meet more people, they question why I'm doing so many different things. Um, and I think my goal is similar to Keddy, where I want to promote the idea to both the older generation and our generation that we we are allowed to do a lot of different things. I think we're seeing a world because of you know the internet that people are having full time you know roles in in the digital space, social media. They're doing videos that they love and they're making money and they're just like living you know the life they want where I was brought up to kind of like I was told oh enjoy university because like after university you're going to get a job and you're going to hate that job like this is the narrative that I grew up with and I'm also seeing other people at like, the university I go to everyone's very uh, they want to go into more like the financial sector if but when I ask them why they want to go into it they're like oh you know I don't really know but it's what everyone else is doing therefore I'm going to go into this and then they know some people know that they're going to hate it but they're doing it anyway so I think my passion is like to show them that actually you know it doesn't have to be this case like there's so much opportunity out there especially in web3 that you can find a place that's right for you that you can enjoy but also you can like not stick to up that one thing I think I agree we're going into a space where we need a lot of different kind of talent and um and yeah so it's kind of promoting that but sorry I just uh digressed um I think I want to add on the recruitment space. I think to solve this challenge isn't just from the education standpoint, but it's also from the recruitment standpoint. Like, how do companies look for talent and how are they hiring? And the reason why I think Web3 is a the metaverse space is a great like place to start is because it's so new and it's so innovative that it's the best place to cause change. Because, you know, in the traditional world, when you um, want to get a job, like first of all, you need to show that you've got good grades. And once, and they usually use like, um, you know, AI or something to scan your CVs before you even get a chance to go to the interview stage. And there's a lot of other interviews after that and assessment centers. And you're doing this on, on top of university and it's very stressful. Um, but it's like, um, like, if you don't get the two one, then you're immediately like out of the picture of being able to get to the interview stage to allow the interviewer to see you as who you are as a person. And I think, when we think about the education system, is it really preparing us for the real world? Are we really learning the right skills? And companies are using the grades that we get from the exams that we take at university, learning skills that we don't actually probably apply to work to assess whether or not we're um, like worthy of an interview. It's like, I think it's quite wrong. Whereas when I first entered the Web3 space, people are hiring through Discord, they're hiring through Telegram. They want to get to know you as a person. Like all the internships that I got were through meeting people in person, showing them what other side projects I've been doing, what results I've been getting. And I think, um, you know, when it comes to changing the, like the workplace, the education side of things, we need to also address that, the company side of things, like how are people, you know, recruiting? Um, but yeah, sorry, I kind of <laughs> deviated away from the question because I wanted to add on, like, I love what Kelly said. And I think if we address the education side, but we also address the hiring side combined, we can create a world where Gen Zs can really, like, you know, thrive. Um, when it comes to the metaverse education, I think it's also a really great space. I think the metaverse enhances, you know, how we learn because, you know, I, I took like a finance module and... I had to do calculations on paper when in my mind I'm like I'm pretty sure there's a thing called excel we can use <laughs> and so it's like oh okay this is a weird timing to get like a, a knock on the door um but I'll be back in one second I'm very okay no no problem presence uh, okay so can I can I add something really quick to that yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I think uh, what I don't know if presence can hear me, but I definitely agree 100% with uh, what she said. And uh, I would say one incarnation, like one vital incarnation of Web3 is actually around DAOs. And um, I think in the future, uh, it's de it definitely gives us this kind of flexibility where instead of having to work like a 40 hour week with just one employer, we can join, you know, multiple DAOs and actually have a say in where the brand goes and in the direction that, it, that the company takes. And uh, because of DAOs, you know, they have, uh, because they're blockchain based, all of the really autonomous work is taken 
uh, and is automated by the DAO's codes. So it really gives us uh, the freedom to take on more fulfilling work. And uh, this really, you know, helps to foster innovation. And uh, I think it's really going to help us push the human race forward. And I'm super excited to be a part of it. And uh, all of us here are quite early in the space, but in the future, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, um, I yeah totally agree with you, Leila. And uh, I think technologies are, uh, in a way, giving each one of us an equal voice, right, in the process of decision making. So we, the people, will decide uh, what we want to wear, what we want to do, how we want to socialize. And the big brands uh, will not have that much of a say. They will have to follow the Gen Z and. Yeah, I yeah, do. they have to transition yeah. now already to the yeah. to the metaverse space, and we yeah. we as Gen Z we want to own as well the data that we create, the data that we generate, like yes. we want a piece of it. Absolutely, and fairly and squarely, because the big brands yeah. and all those social media outlets they made serious money, billions of dollars, and all of us did not get anything, right? Even though we were yeah. generating all the content, so now times exactly. are going to change. And mm -hmm. just uh, before I go to Hana, uh, this is my observation that the attention span of Gen Z is like goldfish. It's eight seconds, okay? It's a real challenge for brands to communicate with Gen Z in that small window of eight seconds. Hana, can you throw some light on that? Was this also a fun well, I think that this is one of those myths that were created around Gen Z. A I don't think that their attention span is that short because I've seen many of them sitting for hours focusing on a Netflix series and not even willing to move for two seconds or answer a little question. So we, I think what is important is to understand that because of the way they grow up, because of the exposure, to huge amount of information, they are able to make judgment pretty quickly. Are they going to be interested in something or just move on? It is basically the same thing like what's going to stop your finger from scrolling up, right? So you have, you, you have to be able to communicate whatever you want to communicate to get their attention quite quickly. But that doesn't mean that they're gonna just come and spend two seconds with you and then move on. If you have what something good to offer, they're gonna stay and they're gonna stay for a long time. Yeah, but also, Hannah, you know, uh, we say in Web3, uh, storytelling is very important, but you can't tell a long story because they're gone. I mean, it, it better be very catchy, very interesting. And I think it's a challenge for brands to be able to uh, get the attention of Gen Zs and get them to stay. So I don't know, I'll go around the room with your comments. Let's hear from all our panelists. What do you think about this? What do brands have to do to get your attention? Let's just focus on that. Yeah, presence. Go for it. <laughs> I think I, I what I'm seeing is that identity is a really big part. I think storytelling, the goal of storytelling, why is it so important? It's a part of the community building aspect of it. Because I'm seeing like, Personally, I'm a Gen Z and it's very hard for me to feel like to get my attention, I think, for for some things. Like I think YouTube channels, everyone is like the same. But there is one channel that I think has done like a super good job that's hooked me in for like a long, long time, years. And it's called Yes Theory. And the reason why is because of the mission that it's promoting, I would say. So it's not just like the story, but it's mainly what do they stand for? What are their values? What is the community energy like? Like the people, are they all doing the same things towards the same mission, which is a part of the story of the brand. And if it aligns with me, then I'm very much like, yeah, get me involved. I want to be a part of the community. I want to be a part of the network. And I think if brands can, it's kind of like seeing why do some NFT projects do so well when the art doesn't really like, it's not as special as another piece of art, um, but it's because of the community aspect. They've really managed to bring people together who have similar values and mindset and working towards a similar goal and to be able to connect each other together. And I think once you get that, then the community will do the job for you and they will help grow your brand for you. So I think that's the difference between like Web 2 and Web 3. We're seeing, you know, in Web 2, it's all about like brands doing the work. But in Web 
uh, Web 2. And Web 3 is all about brands doing the initial work to build up the first few fan base in a very strong way. And they will go and help you do the work for you to capture the audience. So I think it's like finding the Gen Z circle that align with your values and getting them to help you expand like your brand for you. Um, yeah, that's my take. Yeah, and I would, add, I would add to that that yeah. there is a great element in what Presence is saying of in the community. People don't just join a community because they align with their values. I mean, it is a very important part. However, one of the reasons why you join a community is because you know that you're going to be listened to and that you're going to be active participants. So, and this is really one of the big things that brands need to understand. If you want to go and communicate and connect with Gen Z, you have to tap into their creativity because they can do more creative things as a community than a single brand can do you know, over a very long period in time. So that uh, active participation and Gen Zers from all our research is very clear. They want to be part of the brand. They want to give feedback to the brand. They want to be part of the product development process or a campaign process or just kind of that uh, complete engagement with each other in the community is extremely important. The other thing is that Gen Z is a very curious. And as you said in the very beginning, when you ask your son a question, he said, look at Google. So they always like to look for answers, to learn new skills. They teach themselves complete skills just by watching uh, YouTube videos. And I think another aspect of a successful community is what are the learning that you are offered in the process? And, and I think this is one of the real reason why some of the, of the platforms, the gaming platform are very successful because you got all these elements. There is community, there is creativity. You learn social skills, you learn financial skills if you have to purchase things and make purchasing decisions as, as you go, and it's fun. So there is not one thing that's gonna kind of pull Gen Z. You have to have all these elements. Absolutely. Yeah, we and to if I might add, uh, I definitely agree with uh, all the points that you just mentioned. And uh, today as Gen Zs, we, in terms even of marketing, in terms of products, in terms of choices, we have a million choices to make every single day. And uh, I think as well, what uh, really excites us in terms of Web3 uh, is the fact that I think in terms of brands, we want to be incentivized as well. For example, the reason why, you know, Nikeland was so successful is because the participants and the visitors were actually rewarded for the time being spent on the platform. Like I'm, I'm tired of aimlessly scrolling through Instagram and, you know, through all of the web two social media where we're just a data point and, uh, you know, just uh, targets that brands are trying to sell a product to. We don't want that anymore. We want to find our community. We want to uh, be involved uh, in the decision-making process of brands with which we align with, with whose, whose values and mission resonates with us. And that's what, you know, attracts us to them. And at the same time, it's a win-win situation for everyone. We win, the brand wins. And uh, we're not just a product anymore. That We're not bystanders anymore. Yeah, so I, I hear you, Lela. And I think uh, brands need to listen uh, to their audience, to the Gen Zs, and design their products based on that. Yep. Those, they those need to make their... Right? Yeah. Exactly. They need to make their experiences more interactive, uh, more, you know, educational, something more interesting. Like it's not it's not that we have a short attention span. It's just that as as Hannah said, really well said, that we know exactly what interests us. If it's going to yeah. be a campaign that's not that's just going to try to sell us a product without any meaning behind it, just for them to to benefit from it. Of course, we're just going to skip after a, a half a second. It's not going to take us and we're never going to take another look to it. Gen Z's are actually much more strict with that. And, uh, you know, once we don't like a brand, we don't like a brand like we're just going to go past it. Yeah. Before I go to Kelly, our next webinar next month is how you convert consumers to fansumers. So that's a new term we have coined. And I think brands need to start looking at how they can convert from web two to web three and create kind of brand ambassadors who, you know, talk about their brands even when they don't 
And I think that will be very powerful. So the challenges, I think, for all brands to create fans, humors, community. Uh, let's go to Kelly. Kelly, what's your take on uh, the topic on hand? Yes, kind of wrapping up what my colleagues have said uh, and building upon that, I think the best way you can look at this generation is it's a generation of creators and builders. So uh, we want to have autonomy on our pathways and success and um, have ownership in the end result and make an impact. And so what that innately means is we're lifelong creators. We want to interact and create um, within organizations, outside of organizations, and chart our way forward. And so there's a lot of opportunity for brands to tap into that potential to drive new innovation and uh, refresh their direction into the into emerging sectors, but also um, building on what Layla has, has mentioned, it also is infused when we're looking to interact, to create points of interaction so we're no longer speaking to an audience, we're speaking with an audience, which means two-way platforms <laughs> rather than one. This is a generation that, uh, uh, as we've talked about, is used to scrolling and watching YouTube videos and all these things. Well, what are those forms of communication? They're one way. We get tons of one-way communication. We have information overload of one-way communication. And with COVID and the pandemic, we're also seeing that it means that we've been even more isolated and um to, uh, re restricted to using those forms of communication. So when we have opportunities that create human connection, opportunities to feel belong, belonging to a community, to feel seen and valued, well, those experiences naturally stand out because as digitalization takes over, those experiences are farther and fewer between. And so we recognize and remember them. And it's a way for us, again, to take ownership of our futures by being the creators of them. And I think if you frame it in that mind of understanding that we are individuals who want to be, who have ownership to create our future, well, then you can apply that to any role or, or pathway or consumer group, because then you understand the mindset of wanting to have um, an active participation in a a product or have a say or decision making and all these other things that we summarize uh, when you treat an individual as not just um, another data point or cog on the wheel, but an individual creator that has their own keys and talents and ideas that could be infused into what you're doing. Wow, that was a, a, a masterclass. Thank you, Kelly. Drop the mic moment for me. Uh, <laughs> so many insights. Yeah, I mean, I love the word impact because I think Gen Z want to create an impact and I term them as impact entrepreneurs. All of you in the room are impact entrepreneurs. You're going to change the world. You're make, going to make this world a better place. So I applaud you for what you're doing. And also I love Kelly, the concept of two-way communication, right? Brands can't speak to people anymore. They need to interact in a, you know, immersive way, in a gentler way. And I think that's uh, where brands need to re-engineer and uh, learn from the Gen Z. Uh, I'm going to give some time to Alistair to voice his views on uh, Gen Z's expectations. How do we reach out to you in a successful way? Yeah, so um, I think there is no just one target when we are talking about Gen Z. Like so many people and we can split with different needs and so how the brands reach out i guess i think i think then if you see there is some part of gen zers that's totally following a flow and maybe are not so consciousness about what they are doing so maybe they're following a trend they following a influencer or actor or singer whatever and in that case like a brand choose a testimonial and a bunch of people just following uh, that influences without asking uh, okay it's good or not good but there is also a a good part that it's more uh focus and take attention to what they are doing and yeah the emotional part and the emotional experience is or probably it's one of the the goal that everyone okay it's not just being there doing that but i would like to be 
emotionally attached to myself and what I'm doing. Yeah, probably the emotional and and feeling uh, in the part of something, part of a community. <laughs> and yeah, that's yeah, I think feeling of point. belonging is very important and brands need to address that. Uh, so yeah, a lot of challenges for brands going forward. Uh, they have to understand the mindset of the Gen Z. They have to find uh, new ways of communicating through new channels. I mean, I know so many brands, they still don't know Telegram, Discord. They are doing old ways of, you know, old social media, Web2 stuff. So they need to migrate uh, to where the Gen Z are spending time. And uh, Hannah, I want to uh, pivot to you. I read one recent post uh, of yours on LinkedIn, which was talking about the Roblox uh, generation, right? So can you talk us through a little bit of where uh, the Gen Z are spending their time, et cetera? Yes, I, I think the, uh, the Roblox and the Twitch of this world um, are giving us a very good glimpse into the metaverse and what it can be. And because the metaverse is really early stage and people defining it in a different ways, I think the gaming is a, is a good is a good microcosmos of uh, of what it, of what this could be. So I think the first thing that I would say is. Uh, until now, we were talking much, you know, like when, when we talk brands, we were talking a lot about, you know, the key channels. And we make this separation of online and offline, and, and it's really stores and e-commerce. But what everybody's start, starting to understand is that almost every digital touch point is a channel. And therefore, the gaming platform is a channel too. And, you know, just use the principle of you got to be where your customers are. If you want to go where Gen Z are, you go to gaming platforms because every day there are like 35 million Gen Zers playing something on, uh, on this platform. And I think the beauty of Roblox particularly is really it's addressing all these principles that we all discussed about in the past hour, which is there is a great sense of community there are very strong community rules about behaviors. So you learn how to play with people, but also respect other people. There, are no, there is no room for bad behaviors on, on the platform. So, so I think you learn, you learn good social skills. You learn to play together with people you never met before, which is another, uh, another important, important thing. So, you know, it's very diverse, it's very inclusive. And then, of course, there is the whole uh, creativity aspect. You create games, you, you bring yourself, you can customize your avatar. So it plays into that creative nature of Gen Z. And there is the learning and um, the learning aspect of it. So if you if you think about it, I don't know that they have done that really from the beginning. Uh, they designed it this way, but they really landed on the right, what I would call a formula that works with this generation, which is community learning creativity. Thanks, Sana, for those insights. Uh, there are a couple of questions in the Q&A tab. Any of the panelists who want to answer those, please go ahead. And uh, I want to thank uh, some of the Meta Shapers community members who are in the audience today. Shout out to Susan, Sahar, and Gigi. Thanks for being here. Um, so before we wrap up, uh, for the audience, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us through the chat window. We'll be happy to answer them. And I'm going to go around the room on uh, your closing thoughts, uh, starting with Leila. Uh, let's take like one and a half minute each on what else uh, you want to share with our audience before we say bye to them. So over to you, Leila. I think uh, it's very important, the discussion that we had today. And uh, for me, I really want to put the emphasis on making sure that we don't replicate the same mistakes as we did in Web 2. I think right now, you know, Web 3 offers us the necessary tools that we need to make sure that we shape a more diverse and inclusive, more transparent and fairer world. 
uh, with uh, lower barriers, barriers to entries, uh, more opportunities for everyone, and more equal opportunities for everyone. And uh, really, I think now is the time to seize this opportunity and make sure that we, we do our best, you know, to push the human race forward and to continue the great work that everyone in this room has been doing and around the world. So, yeah, I guess that's really my focus. And every day, you know, I'm trying to, to help to do that. And I also want to say a big thank you to all the All-Stars Women ladies who are here today. Uh, Jackie, I see you're here, and uh, Susan, uh, Christina. So, you know, thank you a lot. Really appreciate the support. And yeah, I think now is also a, a perfect time to, to all come together and uh, to be open-minded. I think in Web2 and in the last you know few in the last you know forever when we go to school we've been taught to you know work alone not collaborate uh you know don't do mistakes etc and i think now is the time to change that and to yes. i think and collaborate. it's okay to fail it's okay to fail. exactly yeah. you have to learn from your mistakes yeah. and um now you know as as entrepreneurs you know as early entrepreneurs like in our early years i think it's like the the perfect time and place to yeah. to, to do that and don't be afraid to try new things definitely yeah. try to get out of your comfort zone every day this is what's gonna make you uh learn and grow and uh, discover new things so these are like and, my and Lala, uh, maintain work-life balance yeah, we, yeah, maintain work-life balance because actually like it's as Gen Z's, um, me, I'm, like we're all, all of us are able to stay, stay awake for like two days straight with just like a, a short free red moon and that's it. <laughs> so okay. yeah, maintain work-life balance yeah. is important. Okay, Thanks presence. So yeah, presence, uh, final comments. No, I really, I really enjoyed the discussion and um, I'm really grateful that Lamar joined the call. He mentioned something to me uh, during like our discussion, which is very interesting, where it's kind of like Gen Zs are becoming customers for brands instead of the other way around. Because I remember, I think before the FTX crash, um, A16Z did do a report where like it's going to take you know, this decade for the next billion of people to onboard into Web3. So in, when I saw this comment, I was like, you know, it makes total sense that Gen Z's become a part of the equation when it comes to building out these applications because we will be the main users of this space. Um, and so, yeah, Lamar mentioned something very interesting about actually it's, you know, we're going to a space where Gen Z's are becoming customers for brands as opposed to the other way around because we have the tools and the knowledge to support them to build out what, what they want. Um, so, yeah, appreciate okay. Lamar for joining the call. Yeah. Um, I'm very excited. Thank you so much. Kelly? Yes, uh, uh, definitely. Brands become the customers to be able to um, solicit Gen Z to be able to, um, it, you know, it's so interesting actually just to build on that because I think the perspective of, um, uh, of what Presence has just articulated really sums up the approach to engage this generation around the two-way communication. Um, the old way is uh, build it and they will come. Um, you want to connect with us because we're great and we're doing something and we have this great product. The other way is now saying that um, why you need to invest in us, why we're better. We're now pit brands now are pitching Gen Z to um, invest in their vision and their product. And I think that's a great way that if you go into it thinking that you're pitching the other party, you're innately going to show up in a more meaningful and engaged way than just feeling like you're all that and that everyone should self straightforwardly agree that your product is what they need. So I think that's an interesting uh, flip and that could really help in terms of product innovation. Um, my summary would just be to understand this is the generation that are the architects, builders, and creators of the future. And so one, if you look at them like that, again, it requires you, you collaborate with an architect to build your vision. You don't just uh, build it on the own without an architect if you're wanting to great, build a beautiful masterpiece and vice versa. So I think if we treat this generation as um, independent architects and creators, uh, then we can find more ways to engage. And then we as a generation can understand that it's, that it's okay to be yes and, that we don't need to have just one role because as a creator, you create new things all the time. It doesn't have to be that you're dedicated to only one element or aspect of yourself. Um, and it allows us to show up in the world as these multidimensional identities that we're evolving into. 
Super. Uh, Alistair and then Hannah. First of all, thanks for having me. It was a pleasure to yeah talk and meet people. And as Leila said, uh, try to not make we have not try to make the same mistake than Web two and Trusters. So don't just try to push the technology to its limits, but understanding the human being the center of our focus. And so in that case having ethical question around what we are building okay will be good not good what will be the yeah the bad part of a new technology and okay could improve that but also bring together more faces of and shapes so try to understand the overall point of view of what we are doing and yeah try to ask him and question yeah whatever Thank you, Thank you. Uh, Alistair. Hannah, your closing thoughts? Yeah, my closing thoughts is if you want to engage with Gen Z, then listen, listen and listen. I think that's really important because I see every day people making so many assumptions instead of actually having the right conversations with the generation. And the other thing is remember that creativity is one of the biggest assets that this generation is bringing to the table. So if you are able to tap into it, you're going to be benefiting and they're going to benefit. Super. On that note, I'm happy to conclude this webinar. Our future is in safe hands. And I love the contribution of the Gen Z. Uh, you are on a great mission. All of you, I like I said, I applaud your efforts. And feel free to reach out when you need advice from an old guy in the room. I'm happy to uh, you know, be there for you guys anytime. And I mean it. And finally, for our audience, if you want to learn about the metaverse and NFTs and Web3 and DAOs and tokenization, it's good to uh, read uh, stuff online. It's good to watch webinars, YouTube videos. But more importantly, find a Gen Z mentor. That's the fastest way you'll grow. And I talk through experience. Thank you for your time. All panelists, thank you for your contribution. Thank you so Our much. Audience, uh, thank you for spending your 60 minutes with us. And uh, see you in our next webinar next month. So bye for now. See you soon. And thank you all. Bye. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you.